I recently came across a list of the tallest voluntarily demolished buildings in the world. So I thought it'd be really cool to make a video on the buildings and, and it's neat because Google Maps has a record of most of these because most of them have happened in the last 20 years. So you can actually see before and after pictures and in some cases before, during and after pictures. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's what this video is about. I'm just gonna get right into it. At number 10, we have the UIC building in Singapore. That's this high rise right here. Oh, one thing I was told last time that I moved too quickly on Google Maps, so I'll do my best to uh, slow it down so everybody can see what I'm pointing at. Anyways, the UIC building was a 500 foot tall, actually just under 500 foot, 499 foot tall building that uh, in 2012 was slated for demolition. And then now this is 2013. You can see that it's under demolition. By 2014, it's completely gone. And then a couple years later, the replacement is under construction. And a couple years after that, the replacement's complete. Uh, one thing you'll notice with Singapore is it's going to show up on this list a couple more times. It's, uh, I guess that's just a product of it being densely populated and there being a lot of building and lots of reasons, lots of motivations to get rid of old obsolete buildings, unlike a lot of other places around the world. So at number nine, this is actually the replacement building because most of these demolitions have actually occurred in the last 10 or 15 years. So we have Google Maps that we can look at historic uh, historic images of what used to be there, which is pretty cool. And part of the reason why I wanted to make this video, because I think it's neat that we're at a time in history when we're kind of the old crop of skyscrapers are being replaced. And we've never really had this many obsolete skyscrapers to deal with. So it's neat to kind of take a look and see. Anyways, this Morrison Hotel was what was here before and then it was replaced with this building. The Morrison Hotel was 526 feet, built in 1925 and demolished in 1965. So that only lasted for about 40 years. Next up, we have the uh, World Trade Center in Tokyo. This was 2009. And then, let's see, I guess around... Demolition on this one started in 2022. As you can see, they're currently in the process of demolishing this one. Um, another thing that you'll see a common theme with these ones that I'm showing on this video today is all of them, or virtually all of them, there may be one exception, but virtually all of them had to be deconstructed floor by floor because of their height and because of where they're located in these dense, dense, po densely populated areas. So you couldn't implode them like you would with shorter buildings in less dense areas. Anyways, 2023, that one is completely gone, and presumably since it's in Tokyo, there's probably already another building under construction. Uh, that one was 533 feet. It was built in 1970 and demolished in 2023. So it's interesting to see also the uh, lifespans of some of these. Next up, this one's in, another one in Singapore, the Fuji Xerox building. And uh, it was built in 1987, demolished in 2023. So the, another one with a pretty short lifespan, less than less than 40 years, which, you know, for a house may not be that, that crazy, but for a 541 foot tall building, you would sort of expect it to last a little bit longer. Anyways, this, this shot is 2021, 2022. You can see they have all the, all the uh, covers on, getting ready to demolish. 2023 it's on the way down and then 2024 looks like either finishing up uh, finishing up the demolition or getting started on the replacement so the next one up on the list was a little bit harder to find on google maps and that's because it never actually got finished this was the tallest building to be demolished with explosives this was that one that i was talking about was the exception and it's also one of the tallest buildings to ever be started and never finished. This is the Mina Plaza in Abu Dhabi. And as you can see, it was a massive project. It was really sort of like four towers in one, with the tallest tower being uh, 553 feet. And uh, uh, construction halted in 2014, then it sat there for six years until they finally demolished it in 2020. So. Big waste on that one, definitely worthy of the uh, making it onto the development fail page. 
but uh, unfortunate that they never were able to finish that one. On to the next one. Now we're back to Singapore for the CPF building. Like I said, Singapore, you're going to hear that a couple times. This is, as of 2015, it was a 561-foot-tall building built in 1976. And then by 2017, it was on its way down. As you can see, I'm moving very slowly for the people that don't like if I uh, shake it around too much. Understandably, but... Um, 2018, it's almost completely gone. 2019, something new is already going up in its place. And in 2020, 21, something new is already done. So, like I said, Singapore in particular is has you know a pretty good reason to want to get old buildings out of the way. I still question though, like some of the time it seems like kind of a waste if. We're living in this world of everybody wants to do what's good for the environment and stuff. I mean, that seems like kind of low-hanging fruit. Like, don't tear down a building just to rebuild another building. You know, kind of waste of resources and stuff. I know a lot of cases there's more factors to consider and and there's, you know, the, the old building is obsolete or maybe it has asbestos or maybe it's you know, doesn't give the owner the floor space they want or it's not the type of building they want. So obviously a lot of factors go into it. But like I said, just from a from a practical environmental standpoint, it seems like the more of these that you can reuse and not tear down, the better. So next up, this one is the most painful one for me personally because, and I, I did a video about this, um, the Singer building was this like old school, at, at one point in time, it was the tallest building in the world. It's like, was it 700 feet tall? 612 feet tall. Very ornate, elaborate building. And um, unfortunately, it got torn down along with another building that was also pretty elaborate. The City Investing building, as you can see down here. This, these were both torn down to make way for this building, One Liberty Plaza, and uh, that took place in 1968. So I think that was sort of one of, there's, there's several sort of high profile demolitions that took place of old historic buildings in the late 60s and that kind of kicked off a lot of the historical preservation movements that we have. Um, which I think are mostly good. I think it's good to, like I said, the less you can tear down, the better. I know there's practical reasons why you need to build new things, but if you can reuse stuff, you know, it's it's good not only for saving resources, but also saving history and saving cool buildings and just all around, it seems like it's worth it. So anyways, up to number two, we're at 270 Park Avenue. So now this is the second one in a row in New York. And as you can see, that's the old building. And then round about 2019, they, uh, they started tearing it down. And then by 2021, you can see the uh, structure of the new ones going up. This one's actually a, a pretty cool building with all the, I don't know, all the Structural engineering that went into it. I don't know enough to know how they make a building like that stand up, but it looks pretty cool. And this one was 707 feet, the old one, built in 1960. And it's going to be replaced by something that's going to be 1,300 feet. So, pretty uh, big addition to the New York skyline once this one's completed. Actually, it may be completed because this was 2022. So, I don't know. It's probably getting close at least to being topped out. But, uh, and then, so now we're down to number one, the AXA Tower in Singapore. Um, like I said, Singapore, pretty, uh, and actually the interesting thing is a lot of these, these Singapore ones, at least two of them, sorry for moving this so fast, but I just wanna go around to show, a couple of these are right down the street from each other. Like, so it's it's almost like, um, like there was a, 
kind of cohesive plan to kind of clear out the old and get the new in. Anyways, this AXA tower was the tallest one, 771 feet. Tallest voluntary demolition of any uh, high rise in the world. This was 2022 when they started putting up the uh, putting up the covering to start taking it down. This was later in the year in 2022, and then this 2024 finished up demolishing and probably going to build something big in its place. This one was uh, actually one of the shortest lived ones. It was built finished in 1986 and was demolished in 2023. So you're talking less than less than a 40 year lifespan for a building that was almost 800 feet tall. So that's kind of crazy. But anyways, that's uh, that's the top 10 tallest voluntarily de de demolished buildings in the world. I left out obviously the uh, Twin Towers in New York and there was a few other ones. There was one in Philadelphia that was taken down after a bad fire, that one, uh, one Meridian Plaza, I think, or one Meridian Place. What was it called? One Meridian Plaza. That one would have been at the at towards the end or the beginning of the list, but I didn't want to include that because this was specifically focused on voluntary demolitions, not things that happen beyond people's control. So, anyways, that's the list, and um, yeah. The end.